if you've ever used die grinding bits, uh, I don't care whether it's a cone shaped bit or a, a burr ball or uh, in any of these carbide type bits for grinding, cutting, porting uh, metals. So like this steel I've got here chopped up in the vise. You really can't beat when you've got to actually do some shaping or something like that to use these carbide burrs. Now, the thing is, in steel, you have no problem. You see that carbide is still very clean. Now, let me chalk up a piece of aluminum in here and you'll see what kind of issues we run into. Some sacrificial aluminum pipe there. And let me just dig in. In seconds of grinding, you can see some of these some of these uh, teeth are getting galled up with aluminum, and that's not going to stop. That whole thing will fill up. You'll stop cutting. You won't be near as effective. Um, you won't be able to you know really grind what you want to, and that's a very common problem. Now they do make aluminum carbide bits. The the teeth are farther apart, basically a lot more coarse of a cut, not used for your typical steel but only for aluminum, and you can buy those. However, there's also some tricks that you can use uh, for, uh, for making these cut a lot better and to also allow you to clean these out better with just a wire brush or something like that. And that is, I can use a little wax, just dip in there. And by the way, I mean, this is Champion Cutting Tools, but paraffin wax would work, uh, candle wax will work, um, any kind of waxy substance will actually kind of lubricate those, those burrs. And look at that, it actually cleaned itself out. So there's a couple of pieces left in there, but for the most part, it started lubricating it. It cut really, really well, as you can tell there, because it wasn't filling up. And it also helped to clean those teeth out. Now, if you got it too clogged up, you may have to take some muriatic acid to it or just a screwdriver to kind of pick everything out. But wax works really well. But what also works well, you can use WD-40. I've found that, you know, like uh, lubricants like WD-40, um, it must have that lock, I don't have that on yet. Uh, but here's another WD-40 brand of their, uh, I think, PTFE. Uh, same thing, it's still gonna lubricate. And still allow you to do some cutting. Oh, look at there. So that didn't do near as good as what that wax did. And I'm curious if I go back to the wax. Yeah, you can see that wax, that wax is the ticket. So I would say if you're gonna do cutting uh, with carbide tips on aluminum, especially if you're porting heads, uh, you know, aluminum cylinder heads, anything like that, Get you some wax. Uh, like I said, this is Champion Cutting Tools Brute Lube. Um, used for, I use it for drills and you know, drill presses, everything else when I'm cutting through big, thick metal. Um, but you can see it works excellent with my carbide bits as well. That can work on when you're cutting aluminum with uh, you know, reciprocating blades, um, could be uh, even bandsaw stuff. So anything that's gonna clog up, that wax is gonna lubricate those teeth. It's also gonna help clean those out as well. Cause like I said, there was a bunch galled up in there. There's a few pieces left. And, uh, and every now and then just dab those in there. You don't have to do it a lot. There you have it. Use wax with your carbide tips when you're cutting aluminum. So do you ever get this problem, the paint or polyurethane in this case, around the ring, as we here, have here? And what's the typical thing to do? Yeah, you take a ice pick or a nail, you know, maybe a finishing nail, and you drive holes around the ring so that paint drains back into the container and not in your ring, and that works okay. Um, typically, that's the, the method I use. I have seen paint dry out. I don't know if it's because of that, but anyway, so, you know, here's the typical, you gotta go in, 
you got to clean that ring out the best you can and you never get it all the way out. You know how it goes. And so you just fight that over and over and over. Well, I saw the coolest trick, coolest tip. So let me show you. So this requires no tools at all, no rings to snap in here. And those are a pain because they get just as messy as the paint can. But check this out. Two pieces of masking tape. Good old simple, in this case, cheap masking tape. You know, I don't want to use my 3M stuff on this. So intersect about where you want the pour to be, okay? So you get it? So if I'm going to pour this, whether it be a mixing cup or in this case, this dish, make sure your tape's down pretty good. Look at there. So now we make the pour. Let it drain just a second. And then we can take this. We can pull our tape off and we're left with no mess. There's our mess there in my hand. Throw that away. And now we're good to go. Put our lid back on and we're good. So no mess at all. Thought that was pretty cool. There's nothing much more of a pain than uh, to get mill scale uh, off, of, uh, off of hot rolled steel. So you can pay more for cold rolled steel. Uh, most of the time you can get hot rolled. And a lot of times you may not even find the cold roll. But anyway, so hot, hot steel is going to have this mill scale on it. And you can take a, you know, six, ten dollar flap disc and just fill it up with mill scale trying to remove this. And that's not even all off yet. And I'm telling you, after a while, after a while, you, what you've got is just a bunch of gouges, a bunch of deep scratches and so forth. And it starts filling up your wheel. As you see right here on the edge there where I was grinding on that for just a few seconds, the magic is in two things. Number one, you can do white vinegar and white vinegar will actually eat off the mill scale, but it's gonna take a lot longer. It may take overnight, may take several hours, but what's gonna work almost immediately is muriatic or muriatic acid. So you can find this at, uh, I think, you know, your Home Depots and Lowe's and, and maybe even Walmart's carry it, but you can also find it at your pool supply place and maybe even in more bulk and cheaper as well. So I'm gonna take a couple of precautions here. Number one, I'm wearing gloves, which by the way, you don't want this on your skin but it won't kill you. What you really don't want is to be breathing it. Uh, when this, when the muriatic acid is, is uh, working, it's gonna off gas. And I believe it's chlorine that it's off gassing. But anyway, that's why you hear an exhaust fan running, actually pulling this out of the room. Um, so be careful with this. Uh, white vinegar is a lot safer, but like I said, muriatic acid, which I think I put, picked this up at, I believe at Home Depot, maybe Lowe's, um, but it's, this is gonna work a lot faster. So like I said, this pail is nothing but water. That's going to be kind of our rinsing. Um, and then I'm going to take a little muriatic acid. Again, be careful how you pour this. And take this. Then you can see right away all that green. And by the way, I'm gonna take one right here. Yeah, let's take this in and put it in there. And so we're gonna see what it does to the mill scale as well as what it's gonna to do to the rust as well. So it's only been a few seconds and you see what's happening there. Well, you really see that activating See how that's boiling off? And all that boiling off is in gaseous form that's coming up. So make sure, again, we're pulling this away with an exhaust fan, uh, but be very careful. And I recommend you do it outside. I'm doing it inside. All the doors are open. Got a big exhaust fan pulling this out. But again, recommend this doing outside. Look how well that works. So all the mill scale is gone. Go ahead and pull that one out. By the way, baking soda 
will help neutralize this as well. See that? Still a little bit left there. Still working at. So on the corners. Okay, it's been a few minutes now. Now all that is just about gone. In fact, you can see I can scrub away at it and basically get all that mill scale gone. And if you don't think that's still active, still going to work on that. Okay, let's call that done. So again, within a few minutes, you've got a almost a perfectly clean piece of metal. Um, all you'd have to do that is, is scuff it with probably 220 and uh, be ready to shoot paint on that. Um, but more importantly, now you can TIG weld it. You know, now you're ready to just kind of clean that up with some, uh, again, you may hit it with some 220 or hit it with a, a little disc or something, or you could just hit it with some acetone, and now you can TIG weld that. Where before, no chance in TIG welding uh, at least anything decent whatsoever on hot rolled steel with that, with that, uh, with that uh, mill scale on it. And by the way, if, if you're doing anything with a rag like this, with that muriatic acid on it, put it in plastic, throw it away, it's going to destroy that. So let me put it in here. And again, water helps neutralize it, but it takes quite a bit. Don't assume that it's, that it's absolutely neutralized. Be ca very careful with it. In fact, I'd recommend you keeping it in a water bath for a little bit and then uh, probably even soap and water to just be ultra careful with it. But there you have it. Okay, it's Tuesday, so it's time for another tool tip. Uh, and this one should be one that's pretty applicable to anybody that is working with their hands. And you get this. Um, and in the wintertime, especially in the wintertime, man, my hands crack. Uh, I get spots all over them. And it, so it hurts if you get any kind of solvent on or anything like that. So typically I wear gloves, but sometimes you just find yourself not wearing gloves. And I ran across something this just worked really well for me. Nobody told me this. I just came up with it. Um, one day I was in the shop and I needed something to clean up. And for some reason, I had some pine saw. I put it in a squirt bottle and cut it 50-50 with water. So one-to-one -one with water. And it works as a great hand cleaner. So it'll not only clean your hands, but it, it doesn't burn. So it doesn't burn any cuts. It doesn't burn any abrasions that you have. Um, so it just works really, really well. Uh, so I keep that around all the time to clean various things. And plus, <laughs> you, you won't believe how many people come in and then go, wow, that smells really good in there. So, you know, if you want, if you want your hands to smell like pine saw, you know, that nice pine scent. Uh, no, seriously though. And then even I, I'll find myself sometimes if I just put on a pair of gloves and they're pretty bad and maybe I'm stopping for lunch or somebody calls me, I got to take a glove off and what have you on these nicer gloves, these nicer nitrile gloves. I'll even spray some on there and clean them up real quick. So I found that to work really good. Tell me what you guys use. Again, I know there's towels. I know there's the, the tough stuff towels, the different, you know, muck daddy towels, the, uh, all sorts of, of different, uh, towels that you can use as well. But I've just found, I mean, I think you can buy this at the dollar store for, maybe a dollar, a couple of dollars. And again, cut it one-to-one -one with water and put it in the spray bottle. I just found that it works really, really well on my hands. Um, glove on, good on general cleanup, things like that. And like I said, for the most part, it doesn't burn. Even when you have, you know, cracks and stuff on your hands, it doesn't burn them bad. So there you go. And tonight is all about ratchets. And we're not going to talk about, you know, uh, tooth count and... Uh, brand names and things like that other than I'll just let you know what each one is but I'm talking about maintaining your ratchets this is probably one tool that doesn't get a lot of love it gets a lot of abuse you know you know that three eighths that you put the three foot extension bar on and uh, break stuff free all the time yeah so give it a little love every now and then and and specifically some some lubricant so here's probably a 40 year old you know craftsman uh, USA made craftsman um, yeah, well, let's just, let's just go around and then we'll, we'll start talking about it. So this is a proto torque wrench. Uh, I believe it's a 36 tooth. 
Um, this is a 36 tooth uh, Craftsman, USA Craftsman. Like I said, it's probably 35, 40 years old, um, at least 30. Um, this is a Sonic, which I believe is a 48 tooth. Um, by the way, they got some new ones out that are a uh, higher count than that, but that's a Sonic 48 tooth. Uh, this is a, I believe that's the Husky that's, um, I think 72 tooth, if I'm not mistaken. That's a 72 tooth. And then here's a Matco 88. So this is the, I believe, 30 inch or 36 inch, I think 30 inch, um, uh, half inch drive 88. So it's their 88 tooth. So why do I mention tooth count when we're talking about maintaining? It's because this is something that this is bad as motor oil in cars when you start talking about what lubricants do you put in your ratchets. It doesn't matter what I say, there's going to be people telling me I'm wrong on everything that's here. So I'm just going to discuss it for a little bit. Wheel bearing grease is probably not the best thing to put on here. Have I used it before? Absolutely. Do I think it's absolutely fine for a 30, 36 tooth count ratchet? Probably. You don't want excess. The, the last thing you want is a lot of stickiness in your ratchet because these paws, they have to, you know, rotate, engage, and disengage on the ratchet. So you don't want it stuck. You don't want it sticking. Um, these little springs and ball bearings and detents, you want those freely moving. So you don't want a lot of stickiness in your ratchet. So wheel bearing is not the best thing, but I promise you there are plenty of people who take a little bit of wheel bearing grease put it on their gears and their ratchets work absolutely fine. I've done that. Uh, a lot of people swear by super lube or, uh, you know, engine uh, uh, lubricant or assembly lube for, for engines. This is really nice. The only thing is a lot of times you'll hear them say, well, it runs out a little bit and I have to clean it up. But anyway, it's still not a bad idea. ATF. I've got a, you know, a, a goldenrod pump here full of ATF fluid. That's another one that people like. Marvel Mystery Oil. Um, I personally like gun lubes, and let me tell you why. Uh, with specifically, uh, semi-automatic gun lubes. So the same thing in a, in a semi-automatic pistol uh, where those slides have to work, and they need to lubricate, but they don't need to gum up. They don't need to attract a lot of gunk, uh, and they need to freely move, so they need to be lubricated, and they don't need any residual around to, again, kind of be a, a stick of fire um, to, to attract things. And, and not only that, to gum things up. So that's why I like using gun lube. That's what it's made for. Um, so I'll use a little bit of either the, either the kind of the, the paste style grease like you see here or even the spray, which is kind of a, a little lighter. It's almost like an oil. Um, and I like using this. Number one, it doesn't smell bad at all. It's easy to use and easy to clean up. Um, and it works really well, especially on higher tooth count ratchets. So when you're getting into 88s and even, uh, even you know, you see a lot of 120s now and you're getting in, into above 100, that's where a finer, uh, a finer weight oil is going to work well because it's not going to let those things stick up. So, uh, again, main thing with maintaining your ratchet, clean it up every now and then. You can see that this one has not had a lot of love. I doubt I've ever even cleaned this up. So one thing that works great good old brake cleaner so you know what to do just douse it with some brake cleaner get it cleaned up good uh, get the housing good make sure you got everything out um, take you a, a you know a, a toothbrush something like that and clean those things up and then just take whatever oil you think is going to work best again for the sake of arguing with people probably stay away from wheel bearing grease but it's not going to hurt you just use a little um, you know, if you, if you took a little and just kind of smeared it around, it's probably absolutely going to do fine. And especially on these lower count teeth, so 36 and 48 tooth ratchets, it's probably going to work absolutely fine. And then when you get it together, just work it really good. So show a little bit of love to your ratchets and, uh, they will give you a lifetime of use. Even when you put that three foot breaker bar on it and step on it to break that lug nut loose or that crankshaft pulley, um, so there you have it. I hope I've given you some info. I like gun lube. Um, you can find it readily, you know, Walmart, Dick's, um, sporting and stores, uh, what have you. Easy to find that stuff. But like I said, ATF, uh, engine assembly lube, what have you, super lube. Uh, you can find just about anything that's going to work well for you. Just use it um, sparingly. You don't need a lot. And show some love to your ratchets today. That's your tool tip.